Chapter 19 in the sixth edition is on resistive inductive parallel circuits. And the one that I have drawn here is actually from the sixth, edi sixth edition. It's figure 19-4, if you want a little bit cleaner version of the circuit. And we're given a few values. We're given, well, first let's look at the circuit. We have a, an applied voltage it's at 240 volts at 60 hertz. We have a 15 ohm resistor that is wired in parallel with a 20 ohm. That's the inductive reactance of this inductor. This is a parallel circuit because we have more than one paths for current to flow. So we're given 15 ohms for the resistor, we're giving, given 20 ohms for the inductive reactance of the inductor, and we're given 240 volts as the total applied voltage. Most of you have taken DC fundamentals, and so you should already know that one of the features of a parallel circuit is the applied voltage is the same across all branches of the parallel circuit. So in other words, the voltage across the resistor is also 240 volts. And the voltage across the inductor is also 240 volts. So those were the easy ones. Now we need to dive in a little bit deeper. I'm going to look next at the current flowing through the resistor. We know the voltage across the resistor. We know the resistance of the resistor. So we use Ohm's law to calculate the current through the resistor, which is the voltage across the resistor divided by the resistance of the resistor. And that gives us 16 amps. Going to do uh, basically the same thing for the current flowing through the inductor. We know the voltage across the inductor. We know the inductive reactance of the inductor. So we use Ohm's law again. Voltage across the inductor divided by the inductive reactance. And that gives us 12 ohms of inductive reactance. Jumping back up to the resistor, we know the voltage across the resistor. We know the current through the resistor. So we can use the power formula to calculate the power dissipated at the resistor. That's the voltage across the resistor times current through the resistor. And that gives us 3,840 watts, which is also 3.84 kilowatts. If you watched my video, the short little video on true power versus reactive power versus apparent power, um, you know the inductor does not dissipate any true power. And it's because the current and voltage are out of phase with each other. But it, the inductor still has voltage across it and current through it. So that's reactive power. It's sort of a phantom power, and it's measured in volt amps reactive. And it's very similar to the power formula that we used up here. The voltage across the inductor times the current flowing through the inductor. 
uh, which is, oops, this is amps. My apologies, that's 12 amps. And that gives us 2,880 volt amps reactive bars. Jumping back up here to calculate the inductance of the inductor, we know the formula for inductive reactance is 2 pi FL, or 2 times pi times frequency times inductance. If we do a little bit of algebra with that formula, we can solve for inductance, and that equals inductive reactance divided by 2 pi F equals 20 ohms divided by 2 times pi times 60 hertz. And the inductance is 0 0.0531 henrys or 53.1 millihenries. So now that we have all of these elements up here, we can go for the totals down here. Total current, that's the current flowing through this wire. It's also the current flowing through this wire. If this were a purely resistive circuit, resistive parallel circuit with two resistors in parallel, we could simply add up the currents flowing through these two branches to get the total current. However, the current currents flowing through these two branches are out of phase with each other. So if you look at Appendix B or the chapter, you'll find this formula. Total current equals the square root of the current flowing through the resistor squared plus the current going th flowing through the inductor squared uh, 16 squared plus 12 squared so we have a total of 20 amps of current flowing through this part and this part of the circuit Notice 20 amps does not equal 12 amps plus 16 amps. 16 is flowing through the resistor, 12 is flowing through the inductor, but we cannot simply add them up because they are out of phase with each other. For total impedance, there are different ways we can calculate this. The formula I'm going to use is the voltage across the resistor divided by the current total current equals 240 volts divided by 20 amps equals 12 ohms of total impedance. Again, if you looked at my, watched my short video on true versus reactive versus apparent power, apparent power, that's when we have a resistive inductive circuit. And to calculate apparent power, which is in volt amps, I'm going to use total voltage times total current. I just realized this is, sorry, for impedance, it's total voltage over total current. My apologies. Back to apparent power. Total voltage times total current 
equals 240 volts times 20 amps equals 4,800 volt amps. And finally, power factor. Different ways to calculate it. I'm going to use total impedance over resistance. So that's 12 ohms divided by 15 ohms equals 0 0.8 equals 80 percent. Again, just a quick correction here. For total impedance, it's total voltage divided by total current.